macOS is an operating system created by many for its design language and functionality, but with that, it comes at a cost. macOS can only run on Mac computers, which are typically more expensive than Windows computers. And to make matters worse, Mac computers only get about 7 years of the latest macOS updates before Apple drops support from them. And this is really upsetting because not only does this leave higher performing Macs like the 5K iMacs and the Retina MacBook Pros out in the dust, but also removes more affordable options for those shopping on the used market or currently have these older Macs and don't want to upgrade. Luckily for those people, there's an application called OpenCore Legacy Patcher made by Dortania that allows you to install newer versions of macOS on unsupported Macs. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it. But before we do so, we need to be aware of the risks and how well this thing performs after installing OpenCore Legacy Patcher. For this video, I'm using a 2015 MacBook Air with 8GB of RAM, a 1.6GHz dual core i5. And I wanted to use this MacBook because I want to set my expectations high for performance before any of you are thinking of installing this. General performance was just fine. I was able to load things about as quickly as it was running macOS Monterey and everything from iCloud to AirDrop and Bluetooth all still worked perfectly fine. I even tried downloading once unsupported apps off the App Store, and these apps ran perfectly fine without any issues whatsoever, which really made me happy. But where things didn't work the way I was really expecting it to was actually with web browsing. Scrolling and flowing through web pages was perfectly fine, but watching videos, oh man, it was like watching a slideshow. Basically, it would like pause like every few seconds and it was super laggy. And I tried doing a speed test too to see what the Wi-Fi connection I was getting was. And I got fairly miserable results compared to what my other devices get on my Wi-Fi network. And the Wi-Fi would actually turn off while in sleep mode. Also, Final Cut Pro was a Final Cut no. I keep getting the spinning wheel and video playback was super laggy. iMovie had similar results where basically it would just freeze up all the time. I keep getting that spinning beach ball. So when you do encounter issues like this, how do you fix them? Well, you open up the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application and then you click this post install root patch button. And then even though if it says everything's already patched and updated, still click start root patching. And this should hopefully fix any problems or issues that you ran into. And after I did this, I was able to play videos perfectly fine. And I was able to do video editing at a doable speed and it helped perform my performance on this MacBook a lot more. But one thing you can do to be extra safe before you install OpenCore Legacy Patcher is you can go on their website and they have a troubleshooting section and a commonly known issues section for the different versions. And that can help you give a general sense of, hey, is it worth taking the risk of installing this? So here are my final thoughts on if you should really install OpenCore Legacy Patcher or not. I think for at home and casual users, it's a really fun thing to try. Uh, being able to run the latest version of macOS on an unsupported Mac without having to spend extra money on something you don't need is really nice to have, along with being able to download applications from the App Store that are supposed to be unsupported. For the professional users, this is also really nice because if you need Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and you have like an older 5K iMac and you want, you know, support wise it to last a long time, this is also really nice. But where I don't think OpenCore Legacy Patcher is really worth it for is the people who rely on their Mac for like really important business stuff and they need it to be reliable and work. I just can't imagine how much it would suck to go on a Zoom meeting only to find out that your Wi-Fi doesn't work or a driver if the camera doesn't work. And on regular Mac OS, you don't have to worry about that. And if that's the boat you're in, you're probably better off sticking with an older version of Mac OS until the developer of the applications you use stops supporting them. And then you're probably just better off buying a newer Mac there. But for these casual users or these pro users who have like a nicer computer, I honestly think it's worth giving it a try at least. Now we're going to move on to actually installing OpenCore in the operating system. And for this, you're going to need a 32 gigabyte or higher USB drive. And you want to plug that into the computer. Then you want to go to OpenCore's website. I'll either have a link in the description or you can just search it up. And then we're going to click Gain Started. From here, I'd highly recommend doing the reads on the side for the OS you plan on installing because there's some good useful information like, you know, bugs you may want to be aware about or just general information you want to be aware about before installing. But once you decide that you do want to install the operating system, you can go up here and click download and build macOS installers. Then you want to click open court legacy patch release apps. And then you want to install the patcher GUI.app. And then it'll go download the open core application. And once that's done, this will pop up. You want to click create macOS installer. Then select download macOS installer. Select the version you want to install. 
And then once that's done downloading, you'll get another pop up here. You want to click yes to create a macOS installer. Select the download you just created. Then select your USB drive. Now keep in mind when you select this USB drive, it's going to erase all the data on the USB drive. So make sure you have nothing important on there. My USB drive is kind of slow, so it did take a long time for this to install. It took about an hour and a half for me. But once that's done, we'll get another pop up here to install open core to the USB disk. We want to click yes, and then we want to select our USB flash drive again. And this is what will allow us to boot from the installer that we just created. Eventually, you'll get another pop up here to reboot. So we're going to want to click reboot. And while it's rebooting, we're going to hold down on the option key until a screen shows up, allowing us to select different things in this boot menu. Once it does pop up, we want to select EFI boot, and then we want to select the version you want to install. Once it boots down installer, we have two options. We can either go to disk utility and erase the hard drive, start off a blank slate, and download the operating system, kind of like you get a new computer, or we can go and just update the OS. In this tutorial, I'm just going to update the OS, which if you are doing that route, it is highly recommend you create a backup. But anyways, we're going to click on this. We're going to agree to the terms. Then we're going to select our internal hard drive. And then it's going to start in downloading macOS on the internal hard drive. And this does take a while depending on the hard drive you use for this. I'm using a really cheap USB drive, so it's going to take a long time for me. I'd say it took about an hour for this to complete for me from it downloading to installing. And while it's installing, it will reboot a few times, so don't get scared if it reboots a few times. But eventually, you'll get to your setup screen or your login screen. From here, if you're on your login screen, it does take a few minutes to log in again. But once it's done logging in, all your data should be here, but your wallpaper will likely be changed. That's totally normal. Don't worry about that. Now we're going to wait another few minutes and we'll get another pop up saying, hey, do you want to install open core to your Mac? And for this, we're going to click OK. Then we're going to select install to disk. And then we're going to select your internal hard drive now. So make sure you select your internal hard drive. And then click reboot. Then once your computer is rebooted, you can log in again. You can finally eject your USB drive. And then now you're done. You finally have open core installed to your Mac and you're running the newer version of Mac OS you want to install. And then for Mac OS updates, you basically update the computer like you normally would by going to settings, then general, then system update. But one thing that's different is after you install your updates, you want to open up open core legacy patcher again, and you want to click this install post patch updates. And that'll fix any driver issues of things like Bluetooth, webcam, that you might experience on the computer. Now, another thing you may want to do too before you go out and update is do your research and see what other people online are saying about the update. And there's this guy out there, Anson Alexander, that I kind of got a lot of information from this video from. And he does some great videos giving updates on how well the newer version of OpenCore macOS performed on his computer. So definitely give his channel a check out. As for actually updating OpenCore Legacy Patcher, at some point it'll get a notification saying there's an update available. And from there you can just click update and it'll give you some pretty straightforward instructions on how you can update it. Thank you all for watching. If you want to check out reviews on used Mac computers, I'll put a playlist up on screen. If you found the video helpful, be sure to leave a like. Goodbye.